Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to discuss the intergenerational warfare that is coming and how the baby boomers assets are going to be squarely in the sights of just about everybody else. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for being here on the Patriot Nurse channel. We talk about general preparedness with a bent towards the medical with an eye towards history. In previous generations, you had a metric of affordability with housing, which is the key buzz phrase that everybody's talking about right now, affordable housing. And a lot of this had to do with what the median home price was compared to the median household income. Housing is right now more unaffordable than it has ever been for pretty much anybody under the age of 40. And why this matters in particular to the baby boomers and this intergenerational warfare dynamic that's setting up. The baby boomers and really people, anyone who bought a home before about 2019, 2020, if you bought a home and you locked in solid mortgage rates, you're freaking set. And that's how the rest of the non-boomer cohort views the assets and the wealth of the boomers. There's going to be in really the next election cycle and in times to come, there's a lot of envy and there's a lot of anger and there's going to be a lot of covetousness towards that uh, generation and really towards the households and the wealth that the baby boomers have. In many ways, the millennial generation is feeling the effects of the greatest generation, which is not the greatest generation. The World War II and FDR entitlement generation, the ones that went through the depression, the entitlements that they en masse voted for, the millennials and the Gen Zers, and really the Gen Xers too, they're paying for it now. If you have grown up in this cycle of free money, this money that has been doled out with all this quantitative easing, it has a cost to it. It's not free. The cost of free money and the cost of the Federal Reserve printing and the fiat currency, the cost is that those who benefited from it have their children in bondage. And so now we have generations of people who bought into the lie that if you go to college and you just work hard and you save, that you're going to be okay. And that's not true. What we functionally taught our children since the great urbanization of this country and definitely since the Federal Reserve got us onto the fiat system of currency and really right after that came World Wars I and II and Korea and Vietnam and Afghanistan and Iraq. All of this has a cost to it. And that cost is that as people were told to forsake and abandon the ways of old, the homesteading ways, the practicality ways, the ways where people had skills, as they were taught to abandon skills in favor of specialization, they mortgaged their children's future. So now, one of the reasons why you're going to see intergenerational warfare show up and why you're going to, to see, and maybe not even in a kinesthetic form, but definitely in a political form, one of the reasons why you're going to see this is because the millennials en masse have fewer practical life life-giving skills than in any generation previous. And it's not because they're lazy. It's because they were raised and they were told that the path to success was to go to college, to let somebody else teach them how to live in their little rat race grid in exchange for being able to afford housing and to afford a better future for themselves and their children. Millennials aren't having children right now. Household formation is at pretty much the lowest. Yes, it is the lowest that it's ever been in, in the United States history. And it's not because millennials are dirtbags on average. You have a lot of dirtbags, but I'm telling you, you got a lot of dirtbags who are baby boomers too. I know a lot of people who did not get wiser as they got older. They got more entitled and more childish and more expensive toys. And that is unfortunately a, a creation of this bubble, this debt bubble and the fiat bubble that, that we've made. So now we have people who are desperately trying to make ends meet, but they can't do it all. And you know, it's, it's odd for me as technically a millennial, even though I don't identify with a lot of the, the mindsets um, of that, that generation and cohort. We get a lot of flack from the boomers for being lazy, which is not true. We get a lot of flack for being entitled, which is not true. We also get a lot of flack for... Uh, for claiming that we can't afford things. Meanwhile, there are expenses that the boomers deem unnecessary. Here's the challenge, right? If you don't have 
a home. And if you don't, if you didn't buy a home before the great asset bubble, before really the great, the greatest J curve in inflation that we've seen in recent history, if you didn't buy a home, you're screwed. So the uh, conventional advice that the boomers give, which ultimately is one of the reasons why they're going to have be careful what you tell people, because this same sort of stuff is what sparked the French Revolution. Not the American Revolution, the French Revolution. The disparity and the entitled attitude of people who were earlier on in the permutation of the system, earlier on in the cycles around the board of monopoly where their money functionally was worth more, when they tell people, oh, you're just not working hard enough, oh, you can cut X, Y, and Z, there's only so much that people can cut. We don't live in a nation where you can effectively have a good job for the most part, not living in an urban crap hole and not having a car. It's either or. If you don't have a car, which means you have to have insurance and you have to have gas and you have to have maintenance, all these are very expensive. If you don't have a car, you're not getting a good job in suburbia or in rural America. It's not happening. If you live in an urban center where you don't have a car, you have other costs associated with that, including sky high rates for living, sky high costs of food, crime, theft, other things that factor into that equation. Having a car or having a home or having rent, all of these have costs that are associated with them because we had more and more middlemen added on as we got further and further away from our agrarian roots as a nation. As we got more and more focused on the service industry, more and more people had their hands in the pie and more and more fake money got created. There is nothing politically that's going to fix this, guys. There is nothing that's going to stop this clash intergenerationally except for a reset in our currency. The fiat system is what has created this. Politicians on both sides have facilitated the spending. With Republicans, it's let's get everybody into war. And with Democrats, it's let's find every disenfranchised victimhood populace that we can and try and include them by giving away the other parts free stuff. Like that's that's how it works. Both sides have contributed enormously to this. But the fiat system is the linchpin that keeps this thing going. And this is why people under the age of 40 right now are not getting married and not having children. It's not because they're selfish. It's because they just can't afford it. And the, the data bears it out. When you don't have wage growth, for various different reasons, when you don't have wage growth, it's going to create a huge gap in the perception of those people had it good they could buy a house. When I was your age, I didn't have X, Y, and Z. Yeah, but when you were our age, you didn't have X, Y, and Z interfaces to basically siphon your wealth away. It's not just poor decisions. It is the nature and cycle of the fiat currency system. And until it is abolished, there is no out for this. And that's the sad and unfortunate thing, guys. We are seeing more and more. I mean, I live in a red state. And you can probably tell that the timbre of this video is quite sober and different, but I'm just telling you straight up how it is, guys. We are on the precipice of a crisis of homelessness. Um, we're already seeing this in my area in Tennessee. People are being priced out, and it is awful. It is heartbreaking. If you read the local boards, um, some of the local boards, it is just, it's gut-wrenching families, young families, mothers with small children. And no, by the way, all single mothers are not hoes who decided to sleep around, all right? Um, it's amazing just the judgment that you read from, from people about like, oh, well, this woman, she had children and you know, she's a single mom, therefore she must have done X, Y, and Z. These poor life decisions led to her being homeless at this point. It, the, the, the disconnect, the disconnect between generations right now and between generations who have assets, particularly in real estate, and between their children uh, who don't, it is astronomical. Why this matters going into an election year, this is very, very volatile. When you see more and more people who are desperate and who have less and less to lose, when people have nothing left to lose, they freaking lose it. And if there is no sense of hope for people, we are ripe. Any nation 
that finds this type of rapid shift away from people's previously assumed standards of living, it is setting that nation up for drastic upheaval politically and socially and economically. The only play that the powers that be have, the rich men or the rich men, so to speak, the only play that they've got is to drag us headlong into war to start another cycle and also to kill off a whole bunch of people so that way they have less competition for scarce resources. Um, and then, of course, you know, the boomers who are still voting, the boomers who still have wealth, even though theirs is being siphoned away, too, primarily by increases in property tax and a shift in cost of living. There's going to be a huge tug of war for these scarce resources. In two very ancient languages that I'm aware of, both Sanskrit and Hebrew, the root word for war has directly to do with commodities. In Hebrew, it's milchama, the root is lechem, bread. And in Sanskrit, apparently, I'm not fluent in Sanskrit, um, but apparently it is referencing a dispute over, over cattle. Whenever there is competition for scarce resources and there is a perceived lack of equity in the system, you're right for revolution. And the powers that be know this. They're going to try and avoid a revolution because they don't want to lose their, their control and they don't want to lose the predictability of their world that they have created. So they're going to try and drag everybody else into war. This is just how it is. So when you have uncertainty domestically and when you have this intergenerational warfare it's going to set up politically i expect that there's going to be a huge cry um, for more regulation this is just the cycle in nature of events whether it's for rent control um, which i mean the cure from a free market standpoint this is the thing from a free market standpoint the fix for high prices is high prices but here's the thing we do not live in a free market system. And this is something that if you've you know, grown up indoctrinated into the America, the beautiful system, which has you believe that we're a free market system, we are not a free market system. We are freer than quote unquote centrally planned economies like North Korea. But as long as you have a fiat system, you do not have a free market at all. So we don't live in a free market. We live in a manipulated market with a veneer of, with the veneer of free enterprise. But it's not. The regulatory mechanisms of government have grown right alongside with the inflationary nature of the fiat currency that we have, courtesy, courtesy of the Federal Reserve. There is no way out of this except for war or for revolution. And so in that, both, neither one of those are peaceful, by the way. So this goes back again to what we've spoken about on my channel for years, which is the beans, bullets, and band-aids. If you want to be poor, ignore your skills and focus on stuff. I'll say it again. If you want to be poor, ignore your skills and focus on stuff. This whole, like the consumerism, commoditization of the prepper world, that worked when people had money. People's money doesn't buy things as much as it does now. So where do you suppose people are? It's great if you have stockpiles of stuff. Okay, maybe it pays with inflation. But if you don't have skills independent of your stuff, you're running a three-legged race with one leg. So let me encourage you, right? Regardless of what is coming down the pike for us, A, it's not going to be pretty. And then B, if you have practical skills in areas of the beans, bolts, and band-aids, growing your own food, even if it is just something as little as finding a little patch of ground that ain't cultivated near you and planting some kale for, for a fall and winter harvest, or it's a little plant, like anything that you can do practically to take steps to increase your skill sets in the beans, bolts, and band-aids, that's going to help you. Also, from the bullet standpoint, election years are coming up. Historically, this is a time where more and more people are focused on their security. This is going to be a pretty dicey cycle. The left has been very, very quiet for a while because they've been effectively getting their way. Um, but I mean, they're going to, they're going to research. They have they are waiting in the wings. Hear me well. They are waiting in the wings on this. Um, for a for an appropriate time when people are at their most vulnerable and most desperate and they're going to try and appear as the savior they're going to try and parachute in a savior to try and give people the better way the new way the the fdr 2.0 of sorts right but this fdr is not going to be the nice dude in the wheelchair i mean this is going to be this is going to be a doozy that gets sold to people so that's coming. And when people see it who are historically literate, they know that violence typically comes with times like this. It's just the nature and cycle of human events. So being able to defend yourself is huge. And then the third is the band-aids. 
The system that we have created in the United States of healthcare is atrocious. It is one of the most expensive in the world. And there's a reason for this. Again, it goes back to more middlemen in the, in the midst of things, whether it's insurance companies or whether it's more specializations with hospital administrators and um, layers upon layers of people who produce absolutely freaking nothing, but who had the degree, right? So they went to college and they did their thing, but they, they don't produce anything. They just take more and more and more and more commission. It's effectively, it became the mass the mass credit card company ization of the employment realm. They produce nothing, they take a portion. And each transaction, they're taking another portion and another portion and another portion. And a lot of the American employment is stratified along that line. And healthcare is no exception to this. This is one of the reasons why healthcare has gotten so expensive. And the thing is, guys, for the most part, they're not giving you cures. The medical industrial complex is not your friend. It exists to extract wealth from the boomers. Oh, I thought we said the boomers are the ones who have wealth. How do you think they're going to come after your wealth? They're going to get you to mortgage your house so you can pay for your X, Y, and Z procedures that no longer are covered by all these different little subcategories of Medicare. They are coming after your wealth. Unless you can protect yourself from their main sources of wealth extraction, you are perfect prey in their sights. So whether, whether it's the beans, bullets, and band-aids, let me encourage y'all, continue with your skill set development and take this seriously, right? There is, unfortunately, your YouTube world is a world where people um, indulge in a lot of fantasy. And I get it, okay? Because it's, it's a sucky world out there right now, and there's a lot of escapism, and people are desperately looking for hope. I understand, okay? But rather than watch a video and make yourself feel better, do something that causes you to stretch just a little bit. Clarity comes through movement. You will not get a better situation by keeping your rear end firmly glued to the couch or in the lazy boy or with your face in front of the screen. I'm glad that you watch my videos for sure. <laughs> I am. Uh, but I really want people to be able to defend themselves against what's coming. We are up for some unreal levels of change here. The despair that is palpable in our nation right now is sobering. And unless we return to the ancient path, there is no rest for our souls. It is no coincidence that a vast percentage of the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, deal with the nuances of farming and of living a righteous life in the midst of agriculture and the direct application of God's will in our lives through agriculture. We abandoned agriculture as a nation. We abandon even the attempt at self-sufficiency, even the desire to be functionally skilled. It says in Proverbs, a man skilled in his labor will stand before kings. Think about that. A man skilled in his labor will stand before kings. What that means is that a person who creates a quality product is on par and equal with any ruling power. What we have done by taking away traits and by taking away skills and making people little rats in a wheel is we shifted that balance of power. This nation was never supposed to be ruled by oligarchs or, ol oligarchs or elites or kings, but with the fiat system and with the de ag ag with the de agrarianization of the United States and the urbanization of the United States. We traded self-sufficiency. We traded skills for comfort, temporary comfort and overlords. And now we've got no comfort and strong overlords and the greatest disparity of wealth that has ever existed in the United States. We, if we return to the ancient path, we will find rest for our souls. Hope the video was helpful for y'all today. If you did enjoy it, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube, Patriot Marriage. You can also stay with me and support me on Patreon. Subscribe, start cryptocurrency, and PayPal. I'll have links below. I'm still rehabbing and recovering from a car crash. I think I told you guys about that um, some weeks ago. I was injured. My car was demolished. Um, the individual who hit me should never have been on the road. And... Um, it's, it's going to take me some time. So I definitely appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for your prayers. Please continue to pray for me and for my health and for my healing. Um, I am in the process, albeit it has been delayed since this car crash and since, um, since I was hit. 
I'm in the process of creating the next online course. And uh, my goal in this next online course is to equip you herbally. So be anticipating that and be on the lookout for that. We must be self-sufficient or they are going to extract every freaking ounce of wealth and energy and ultimately agency out of us. If we want to be free, we have to go towards the skills and not the stuff. Hope it was helpful for y'all. Have a blessed weekend. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off and I'll see y'all later. Bye.